Alright, what's up with y'all? Today we're gonna be making another video. I ain't been able to make no videos on a high little second because I've been working back to back to back to back to back. But we're finna get this going. You know what I'm saying? Don't mind the bunny. Uh trying to keep my hair healthy and things of that nature. Uh but yeah, we're finna try to get into something today. Y'all gonna see me painting the whole time while I'm doing this video, just because I'm still trying to light this up and I'm trying to get y'all some videos out. But basically today we're gonna be talking about 10 things that you can work on right now while you're young so it could help you in the future you know what i'm saying so make sure you like comment subscribe let's get into it so number one don't care about people's opinion i put like this you are supposed to care about your image but as far as like really taking into consideration what other people think about you it's not as big as you think most people are so focused on what they think about themselves that they're not even focused on you. And once you realize that, you'll be able to focus on yourself just as much, I promise. If you always focus on what everybody else thinks of you, you're never gonna get nowhere because you will always be hypercritical of what you what you're doing, what you're saying, what you how you acting, and you never gonna act like your actual self because you're trying to put up a facade that that really is not you. So number one, don't try to impress nobody. Don't worry about nobody's opinion. Number two, take your health seriously. When I was about, I'd say, 15 to 16, I started taking my health completely seriously. And that's not meaning you have to go to the gym and work out every day. I didn't work out seriously till I was about 18 or 19. I'm 21 right now. So I ain't even working out that long. I only been working out the next two years. But I started taking my health seriously, meaning like what I'm eating, what I'm putting into my body, because you gotta realize, health starts with what you eat. You can work out every single day, but if you wanna eat steaks and and all this other different stuff after you work out, bro, you're not healthy. You're just a nigga that work out. <laughs> it's literally it. You're a Kylie muscle ass nigga. That's literally all you are. So if you start young with eating healthy, you don't have to worry about all them heart conditions, all them strokes, heart attacks, and all that when you get older. You're gonna be, even if it's hereditary, and most of the things are not even hereditary, it's literally caused by what you eat. You'll have a less chance of even coming into contact with anything, whether it be diabetes, heart conditions, like I was saying, like strokes, um, heart attacks, and all of that. But yeah, take good care of your health. Like, yeah, that's, that's number one. That, sh that literally should have been number one. The first thing I should have said. Number three. Try to learn as many skills as you can. When it comes down to like, when you're born into this world, you're a blank slate, which means you have a lot of opportunities to gain abilities. I'm not gonna say everybody was born the same because I, I still to this day, I feel like it's a false statement saying that everybody is born equally. Everybody's not born equally. The world would be very boring if everybody was born equally the same. But everybody has a base that's around the same. I feel like that. And it's up to you to try to make sure that you can fill up your basket with as many talents or eggs as you can. So I feel like it's it's a good thing to try to learn as much as you can while you're here. So you can, you can try to transfer that to your kids because I truly feel the more you learn before you have kids, before you even try to conceive children, all that's gonna pass them. And then they have an easier way to start. That's how I look at it. So that's why my whole life's journey has been to try to learn as many things as I can, do as many things as I can, try to get a good base. So when my kids here, they don't have to do all that. Like they born with it. Like folks are born with certain talents, trying to learn as many things and be as talented as many things. So by the time they get her, they already got it. It's given to them. Number four minimize all your distractions whether it be games girls or boys or girls just minimize distractions especially if you're trying to get to a certain place in your life i feel like it's essential in every man in life specifically to have a point in your life where you are in a solitary state where you don't really have that many friends you don't even if you have a lot of friends you're not always around people it hurts you more to be around people than it is 
to be by yourself. When you get comfortable being by yourself and actually working, that's when you can become a way better person, mentally, physically, spiritually, everything. Because when you have a lot of distractions, your mind is always busy doing something. It's not busy thinking of stuff that you could do. Like like I was saying, like learning new tasks, not new tasks, like new talents and stuff like that. That came, like that, that got way easier for me as I grew up because I didn't have as many distractions. I stopped playing a game like that. I have a whole PS5. I didn't have a PS5 for like two, literally since it came out. But as I got older, I would play it less and less. Like I barely play the game at all. I used to literally be a tryhard at the game. Like I literally used to play the game so much, but it's like the older you get and the more your like your your focus switches, you realize that playing the game all day is not fun no more. Like I like making money. I like actually succeeding and doing stuff. So it's not it, it becomes like you literally feel like you're wasting your life playing the game and doing all that. And with females, it's a whole different story because I Anybody you anybody that know me for real can tell you, bro, I love women, bro. I love women, I swear, bro. But it's like this. I heard somebody say this and I and I literally had to think about it. I was like, damn, that's not a lie. They said you will always lose money chasing a woman, but you will never You will let me let me word this right because I don't want to get it wrong. You will always lose money chasing a woman. But you can never lose a woman chasing money. <laughs> the fucking truth, bro. When a woman sees you on your purpose, bro, and you actually doing shit for yourself, you actually making a name for yourself in the world. Even though people, even though a female would literally say that that personality is it for them, all this other stuff, a woman doesn't want to be with a man that doesn't have. I don't know how to explain it. Certain niggas got it and certain niggas don't, bro. It's literally that simple. I promise. It's like you gotta have something to your number. Like you gotta women find it attractive for a man to to, to have goals and want to be something like. That's why most kings have tons of women throwing themselves at, at, at them. Literally, you're not gonna see a poor nigga on the street and women throwing themselves at him. You know what I'm saying? It don't work like that. It ain't no work like that. But I guarantee. Michael Jackson, somebody that was born talented, but he he worked his ass off. He was a perfectionist. He did all this stuff. Women literally fainted at the sight of this nigga. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I always say you gotta you gotta minimize all your distractions. Don't worry about all the noise. All that can wait later. If you can grind for at least two, three years, stay down and worry about only success. I promise you have a lot of life to live after that i promise so just keep it simple minimize your distraction stay down till you come up number five be completely transparent with yourself before anybody else like and this is one that i had to like i'm learning more and more as i grow up and i'm glad i'm learning it because it, it helps with clarity with a lot of situations and it's something that even grown people way older than me still haven't gotten i promise is literally just being being true to yourself and being honest with yourself and being able to have a sit down conversation in your mind and say, damn, I was wrong. That's humility. Just being able to say, damn, okay, it's probably not, I need help. I need help with this. Saying I need help with this, being able to say, okay, I'm wrong. That, that's not right. I'm not supposed to do that. That, that. that stems from having a good amount of integrity and things like that. Just being able to, to 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 admit that you're wrong. A lot of people cannot admit that they're wrong. And I feel like that's the craziest thing, yo, because nobody's 100% right. Even even though I feel like I'm 90% right most of the time. Because I wouldn't I wouldn't even give anything thought if I thought I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? But I can admit them time when I'm wrong. I have no problem doing it. I have no problem apologizing to anybody if I ever did them wrong or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, we only have a short amount of time on this earth, right? Short amount of time. If you don't try to make the most positive experience that you can while you're here, 
not just for you, but for the folks around you. And and that that's it correlates a lot when you're able to be have like a strong introspection and just be able to notice things about yourself because then you'll be able to notice stuff about other people too. You know what I'm saying? So just be able to just be able to know that you once you're able to be real with yourself about stuff and be able to say, damn, okay, I'm lacking right here. I need to I need to pick I need to pick the slack up, man. Like I'm bullshit. I'm tweaking. I need to come on. I'm not doing enough. When you can say that, you above you above so many people thinking wise because a lot of people can't do that. Especially even if say you take addiction into consideration. Cause I'm the type and a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm gonna be completely transparent. I was the one, I was the type of person, bro. I used to get high so much, bro. I used to smoke edibles, all that, all that. But I stopped it though, and I'm glad I got through that because it's like this. It takes a lot to to sit there and, and smoke something or get high from something every single day, and then turn around in the same breath and say, "I'm not addicted, nigga." Yes, you are. You're addicted. You're fucking smack. You're a little addicted. And if you sit there and say you're not addicted, oh, we's not addicted. It's not, bro. Nobody's saying the plant is addictive. The 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 feeling that it's giving you, that's what you're addicted to. You're addicted to the to the serotonin being released in your brain. The dopamine that's being released in your brain. You're addicted to that. And if you know in the desk, the only thing that can really release that amount in your brain, you don't you don't keep wanting to go back to it. So it's, it's easy to sit there and, and, and deny yourself of the truth just because it make you feel better. But when you actually able to sit there, like I had to sit myself down, I'm like, bro, I'm not producing how I need to. Like when I was doing this, I wasn't doing clothes like this. I wouldn't, if y'all see how I many hoodies and stuff I got over there, bro, I have literally like 10 to, 10 to 20 orders left sitting right there that I got to finish by this week, by this weekend. I would never be able to do that how weed and and, and, and zonked out my mind, dude. I mean, hell no. Nah. But the fact that I can sit here and honestly say I'm done with this shit, and I had to sit down and tell myself, bro, you gotta you gotta stop, bro, because you're not gonna you're not gonna gonna keep being able to do clothes. You're not you can't you can't do YouTube clothes and all this when you high all the time. No, man, no. This shit. Is not meant to be productive off of. That's a re, that's a relaxation, a, a pain. It's basically like a natural painkiller. That's literally all it is. It it it, re, it it's literally meant so you don't have to use your brain. That's what it's for. So you can relax. It's a relaxation drug. You can't be no productive citizen out of this. You cannot, bro. You can't be no productive citizen out of this shit, bro. So I had to get rid of that, but. Stuff like that, it really comes in handy to be able to keep it real with yourself. Let me go ahead and get to the next guy. I know I'm talking my ass off. Number six, take your hygiene serious. And you'll tell you something. This is something that me personally, I always been busy just because, like I said, I like I like women a lot. I love women. Y'all are, are some of the best things that God ever created. I swear to God. And there's no exaggeration. And that's not me me saying that because cause I I want to fuck with every woman or nothing like that. Y'all are literally like that. I swear to God, like no exaggeration. So if I want to be around a woman, you can't be smelling like no no damn no fucking bro. You can't be smelling like a, a old ass leather wallet, nigga. The fuck? You can't be smelling like no damn basketball jam going around no female, bro. So I learned it from a young age. You gotta smell good, bro. That's why I always got. I got tons of cologne and shit right there. I love smelling good, being a, like, I love feeling good. If you smell good, you look good, you gonna always feel good. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even lie. You, I ain't gonna even lie and say you always feel good. That's a mental thing. It'll help you to feel good, especially when you're around people. Cause if you're in a room full of people, this has never bothered me. If I'm in a room full of people and somebody say, who smell like that? Nose turned up and shit. I know it's not me. <laughs> Nigga, I smell like Izzy Miyake. The fuck? I smell like Dolce Gabbana, light blue. The dumbest. You know what I'm saying? I, I know it ain't me. So I take that very seriously. And I feel like a lot of niggas don't take that as serious as they need to. Especially the ones that smoke and <laughs> do stuff like that. I'd have been around some niggas. These niggas smell like straight skunk. 
a human. They don't give a fuck because they hot. They don't care. So it's like, nigga, if, if a nigga can literally sit there and smell like that all fucking day, do go through a whole day and you're smelling yourself. Bro, it's something, man. Hell no, nah, bro. You got to come on with this shit. You bullshit. Hell no. Nah. So that's why I said to keep your hygiene straight. Make sure you're taking showers every single day. Make sure you're brushing your teeth twice a day, at least. Make sure you, 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 just smelling good, bro. It's, man, it make you feel something. And it, they, they just go deep down into way more than just you as a person. Not you as a person, but like your body. With like my room. Like my room right now, to me, is dirty. It's like, I ain't gonna even say it's dirty. It's like control chaos. Like, I, like especially this desk right here, where I got um all these paint cans and all like spray paint all for the shirts but it's just because i've been working so it's gonna be like that but nigga i'm the type of person i'm i didn't got into the habit of making my bed every day like doing small stuff like that to keep my brain wired for structure i'm a real structured type of person so it's when you get into a routine of doing stuff like that is it helps your brain it helps your brain be more task driven and be able to stay on task and do stuff that you need to do and you'll I'm gonna get to, to what I'm, I'm trying to say into the next topic. Let's go ahead and get to the next one. Number seven, associate your emotions of pleasure with success and like big successes rather than like quick fixes. And what I mean by quick fixes is like sex, masturbation, drugs, drinking, stuff like that, video games, all like that. Like that's a quick fix, something that you can do in less than. 15, 20 minutes. Something that you can do in less than 15, 20 minutes, even an hour. Some, I ain't gonna even say an hour. I say less than 30 minutes. Something that you can do in less than 30 minutes that's super easy and it can get you a quick dopamine fix, you don't need to do that. You don't need to associate happiness with that. And that that applies to people that do stuff like that. Because this thing, it's certain people, they can make money. They can, they can make a lot of money in under 30 minutes. I'm not talking to them type of people. I'm talking to the type of people that can sit on the game for hours at a time. To my grown men that, that, that ain't that ain't doing too much else with their life other than doing doing basic shit. And they hop on the game, stay on that motherfucker for hours at a time, and honestly feel complete joy. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But is that the best way you can spend your time, though? You know what I'm saying? Now, that ain't the best way you can spend your time. You can be spending your time studying, finding something new out. You know what I'm saying? I'm the type of nigga, I real life sit there and read a book. Or have an audio book going while I'm doing this type of shit, man. Like that ass. And nine times out of ten, if I'm watching YouTube or I'm doing something like that, I'm not watching YouTube. Like, how you explain it? Recently, I ain't gonna lie, them 20, 20, uh, 20 girl versus one rapper or something like that, them videos have been good as a motherfucker. I ain't gonna even lie, I've been watching them. But usually, if I'm on YouTube, bro, I'm watching some educational. I swear to God. So if it's not based on me finding something new out about, like, spiritual wise, or like my mind, or, or like something about the world, it's gonna be either that finance or just lily clothes. Like even like trading and stuff. I, I I know a lot about trading just because I have videos going on in the background while I'm working on this type of stuff, right? So, I I take that, that that advice very seriously. Like you, you could you could be doing so much better if you if you would get off your phone and lock in in real life, bro. You you could change your life in six months, bro. Real shit, probably less than that, like three months. I really give it three months, ninety days. That's all it takes to learn a new skill and sit there and actually try to put it into action. I don't take ninety days, man. But most people wouldn't try that because. They so stuck watching TikToks about motivational stuff saying that they can do it, but they're not actually going to do it. Fuck, get off TikTok, bro. Y'all niggas need to lock in. Come on now. And it's like this. When it gets to that point and you realize that, that most of this shit that we so focus on is because of social media, like 90% of the shit that, that, that folks care about, whether it be cars, jewelry, or... Uh, having holes and all this shit bro it's because they see a, a, another person living a certain lifestyle and they be like oh 
They got a lot of fame for doing that. I want to do it. Follow her. Share a fucking follower. A lot of the stuff I say is reflected in the clothes that I make because I design all my clothes. I don't, I don't, I don't copy. I try not to copy nobody. That's why I wanted to paint this stuff myself. I didn't want to get it done by a manufacturer that somebody else could go to and get the same shit that I'm making. You, if you want something made like this, you, you have to come to me. You have to get it painted by me. I have to sit there and paint it myself and put time into this shit and actually put my, my effort into it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say it, you, you, it all stems from, <laughs> bro, just getting happy by doing shit that deserves to be happy about, literally. But I ain't trying to talk y'all out of here, though, so I'm going to get to the next topic. All right, number eight. Don't find your purpose, find your passion. And study it. It's a big one because a lot of people will sit there and say, oh, I'm trying to find my purpose. Like, I need to, I need to find my purpose that God intended for me. Like, what's my purpose on this earth? Bro, it's like this. I feel like a purpose, that's not real. Everybody's purpose, everybody's base purpose is to add to the world, like to add positivity to the world. Because you gotta realize, God gave you life so that you can experience life. You can do, you have free will for a reason. That's why I don't feel like you have a purpose. Your purpose is what you make it, right? I feel like everybody has their own specific passion and that's based on what you grow up being around. That's why certain people, they, they, they passions ain't as good. Like certain people passion is literally selling drugs. But there's certain people that sell drugs right now, they're good as hell at it. They've never been caught and they genuinely love it because they love the thrill of that. They love the, the hypeness of they love. And even though that's not a good thing, that's their passion. You can't blame it, that's their passion. But it's certain people that, that love instruments, musicians, that's their passion. And they'll probably confuse that with that being the, um, the purpose, but it's literally just something that they was passionate about it, so they studied it and they got better at it. That's why I say if you if you find what your passion is, like my passion, and I found this out from a real young age, is creating. It's not specifically painting, it's not specifically drawing, it's not specific. I used to do origami and stuff like that too, like making paper airplanes, making paper guns, making paper uh like boxes and stuff to, for like gill boxes and stuff like all types of stuff like I, I used to love stuff like that but it's just like creating like doing stuff that I can sit back and be like I made that like that's me like I, that's my brain in physical form for everybody to see like literally that's, that's what I love doing so whether it come down to me painting shoes whether it come down to me making clothes whether it come down to me uh, like like drawing, painting walls and stuff like that, even singing and all that stuff. Like I still consider that creation. Like like because it, it's like this. Once you find out your 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 um your passion, bro, you said all you gotta do is just study it and get better at it and try to become the best that you can be at it. It's a lot of things I'm pet like a lot of things I'm passionate about. That's why I say, even even though I'm doing the shirts, it's 10 more things I want to do. I'm passionate about finance. I'm passionate about literacy, being like literate in things. Like I'm, I'm passionate about knowledge. I'm really passionate about knowledge. I don't like being ignorant to certain things, especially like stuff that I feel like everybody should know. Because if I feel like I learn it, if I feel like I can learn it, that means I can teach it to somebody else and I can help them become literate because the main thing that that that, that I, I say is holding back us as a as a people is just people aren't caring enough to 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 learn. Like they don't really give a fuck about learning. Folks want an end result without actually make, taking the journey to to find out how to get that result. Folks want stuff hand hand picked and given to them. That ain't how shit work. You gotta be a lucky motherfucker to get some shit hand picked and given to you. That's why I never wanted shit given to me. I don't even ask my own parents for shit. I don't ask them for nothing. Everything I got in this room about myself, literally, everything from the, from the shit y'all don't even see, like the shoes and shit in the back, to the clothes. I, well, all my clothes is the clothes that I made myself. Like even the um, 
like the hoodies and shit I got, like the pants and all, like it, it's stuff that I got myself. So it is like this. I I always been a person to be not I ain't gonna say independent, I'll say autonomous. Like I, I like I like being I like being self sufficient. I I don't like ha having to ask everybody for something. A ask it like I hate that because I feel like if I if I gotta ask you for something, you can hold that on my head for the rest of your life. You can always say, I help I, I did that for him. I, I made him do that. I I, I made on in hell. Let me get it on my own. That's why I say everything I do it is for man, that shit off the love, bro. Literally. I swear to God. Because that that's what's gonna get us back to that 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 real that real goodness in the world, bro. Like having folks that's genuine. It ain't no bro, it ain't too many genuine folks in this world, dude. And I hate this shit because it's getting worse and worse every day. It's like this world. That's why I say, oh hey, I literally believe, bro, the world is gonna come to the end. <laughs> or a reset or whatever it is. Because that shit too ass right now, bro. It's right now, I, I just feel like all our life, the world has been easily 50-50 in terms of love and hate. Like, I feel like it was a lot of love, like especially like early 2000s, the 90s and all that. Even though I went here in the 90s, the early 2000s, bro, the world was so much fun, bro, like pure fun. Bro, nah, you can't go, you can't go five minutes on social media without seeing somebody with their ass out. Somebody did some bullshit to a kid or something. Somebody killing somebody. Somebody doing this, somebody doing that. I'm like, damn, bro, the world's so fucked up. Right. Like, damn, why is this why is it like this? So that's why I said, if ain't nobody gonna do it, nigga, I'll do it. I promise I'll do it. I don't care if I gotta, if I gotta make money, I don't care, bro. We need this shit back. The world would be way happier if we had that shit back. Even in the music that we that we listen to, it ain't nothing but killing, drugs, sex, money. Literally, even the R&B songs. Folks don't even make songs about love no more, bro. These little songs about fucking. That's little all it is with every R&B artist. And why I said, nigga, we gotta get back to, to, our, to our roots, man. To our roots of love, like actual love. That's why I said, that's what my whole brand is based on. Literally, the feeling of love. That's literally all it's based on. Pure, genuine love. I swear to God, that's what I want to convey to everybody. Even through the, even through my YouTube. Man, bro. That's why I said when I do get monetized, bro, I'm spending it straight on on making sure these videos get better and better and better and better. I swear to God. And I'm gonna try to bring, I'm gonna try to bring it. Man, I ain't even gonna tell y'all what I'm gonna do. I ain't gonna even speak on it. I feel like when you speak on stuff, it's it's way less likely to actually happen. Just know I got, man, I got y'all. I swear to God. I promise on my life, I do. Got real for a second there. My bad. But uh, let's get back into the uh, swinger thing. Make sure once you find your passion, you stick to it, you study it. And after you don't fully feel like you've mastered it, then you can move on to something different. All right, number nine, stay true to yourself. With, and I'll put it in terms like this. It kind of go, goes hand in hand with like the, what I was saying earlier with like don't, don't really take other people's opinions into consideration it's little like this you can tell who real and who fake you can tell who's a follower and who's a leader it's easy to tell to me at least i can tell in a room full of people the niggas that 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 got their own stuff going and the people in the room that's following them niggas that got their own stuff going i can tell that easily because it's the type of energy you give off when you when you confident and you know that you, I ain't gonna even say you that nigga, but it's like, or that or that or that woman, it's like this. When you when you self confident and you and you know that you on your shit and you know you doing what you gotta do to make sure you got everything under control, you gonna move like it. You can tell when somebody's unsure about themselves. You have it written all over their face. Like it's literally, you look like a nigga that like, eh, I don't know. You a eh, I don't know ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like you. You an unsure ass nigga. That that's not cool. That's not attractive to a woman when you like that. Is none of that. That's why I say you gotta carry yourself like you know you you're you. You gotta stay true to yourself. That means if you go into a room full of people 
and you sit down, you're not gonna be the type of nigga that, that's trying to please everybody in the room. Like, you, you up in everybody's face like, oh, what's your name? What's your... Bro, sit the fuck down. Chill, bro. Chill. Nah, if that's you, if that's just... If you're an extra friendly person, I'm not gonna take that away from you. But if you know you're not that guy, you're not that guy, pal. Sit the fuck down. That's why... Anyway, I go, I act the exact same way where I'm at. And folks, some folks try to... I, I knew it was real when I went to... A couple years back, me and my mom and my brother, we went to Minnesota to uh, stay with our family just for like a summer trip, right? So we'll go around places. And when I tell you folks in Minnesota, bro, folks up north, period, they are completely different than we are. Like, I'm used to Southern hospitality. I'm used to, to being around people that's nice by default. I ain't gonna say nice by default, but they have, cur like, they're, they're courteous. They, they, they open doors for women. They say thank you when somebody open the door all that type of shit so going up there i'm doing the same shit i'm gonna carry myself exactly how i was born like i was raised to be how my mama raised me i'm gonna open the door for for a woman i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna do all that type of shit but if i open the door for a woman and she's a well paid like i ain't even know that made me feel like damn i ain't mad nigga. like i ain't even have to do that for you but you i ain't mad nigga. so shit like that and like like that, that was a real weird trip because they they would make fun of, of the way we talk. And I told I told myself from a kid, I'm not finna no matter where I go, even if I go to the most proper state in America and I stayed there for 10 years, I'm gonna always talk how I talk. I'm not finna sugarcoat myself for nobody. If anything, I'm gonna make them talk how I talk. That's literally happened. When I went to school or uh, when I went to college, even because I went to Mississippi State, Folks, they 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 kind of country though, but it's some folks that uh, they talk proper as hell just because they be want to fit in. That's little all it is. But I talk, I was talking the exact same way, and and girls really find that attractive. I swear to God, like girls find country folks real attractive just by the way they talk. So that was always the thing for me. I said, bro, I'm blessed to be able to 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 have a vernacular like this. I really feel blessed to be able to talk. So I don't have to force my words and, and and talk like a proper guy that uh graduated from Harvard at the age of no nigga I'm finna talk how I want to talk get the fuck because I'm comfortable that's why I love being around folks that that's not used to it because it's so different than me and it's authentic it's not that's why I, feel, I ain't gonna say I feel like it's more real than other ways to talk but I feel like I ain't even get into that that's a whole that's a whole other conversation. I don't even feel like y'all ready for it yet. But I feel like it's it's very authentic. I'm going to just leave it at that. I feel like it's real authentic. And it's the way that I'm supposed to talk. It's the way that, that I feel comfortable talking. So I'm not going to sugarcoat myself. I'm not going to change up the way I move. Change up the way I am. Because I feel like it, at this point in time, I'm a really solid person. I'm a really good person. I, I genuinely feel like I'm a really good person. So I'm not going to switch up nothing for nobody if you don't fuck with me you, don't, you just don't fuck with me I don't, I don't have no enemies i don't have no ops i'm not a i'm not a gunslinger i'm a good guy i'm a, I'm a stellar citizen i'm a chill guy that's what so i ain't finna man wait you think i'm finna sit there and try to act like us like i like, act like someone night nigga bro i'm a good guy i swear i make clothes i'm a clothing designer bro literally i make clothes i make things that keep people's bodies warm i promise i'm not i'm not none that i don't claim to be Literally, that's what folks mess up trying to be something they're not. That's how folks die. When somebody try to act like something they're not, that's when they they get put in bad situations that they never asked to be in. So that's why I always do. Stay true to yourself. If you know you're not like that, don't act like you're like that, pal. No, no, act like you're like that because that that could be a deciding factor with you getting gunned down for something you you're not even supposed to be in. Literally. So. Just, just stay true to yourself, man. and as long as, as long as you stay authentic and 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 real, folks gonna respect it. I swear to God, you you might not think folks notice that as much as they do, but folks can tell tendencies, real tendencies, and fake facades very easily, especially if they are, um, what's the word, intuitive type of person, like they intuition real high. They can definitely sense that shit, and they and they 
you gonna wanna be as far away from you as possible. So just stay true to yourself and just stay real, my nigga. And go to the next one. All right, the tenth and final thing is learn how to be comfortable by yourself. I kind of brushed up on this early on one of the points. I think it was the one where I was talking about like um, minimizing distraction, but I'm gonna get into depth on it just like this. How I was saying, it comes a time in, in every nigga life, even if you a young nigga, say you about 14, 13, 14 watching this. If it ain't happening to you yet, it's gonna happen in a couple years, my nigga. Uh, it needs to happen in a couple years to where you get put in a position where I ain't gonna say you gotta distance, distance yourself from everybody, but you just gotta kinda back up, back away from everybody and kinda lock in on life. Because that that's when you turn from a, a boy to a man. That happened to me, I'd say I was about, I was about 18 or 19. I'll say 19 just so I can talk about the situation that happened when I was 19 because it was after I got out of college. Because as you can see right now, I'm not at college. I'm a fucking dropout. Basically, this is how I go. I was in college 2021 with the Mississippi State. Boom. I was in college for about three weeks. Caught COVID. I was I was cooked. Got sent back home. Back to the Smith residence. Was here for probably about I got sent home. That was like right after my birthday after I got sick. It was probably like September, I'd say 14. Just a random date. It was around now. Uh, I ain't go back to school till like October 14. I was out of school for a whole month. So I was up in the went back to school at this point. And this little backstory. I was an architecture major. It's one of the hardest majors you can ever be in in college. So that's a bad story for that. But when I went back, I still had like a high B or a low A in architecture. I had because I only had four classes. I had architecture, art psychology and some math i forgot what the math was but in you know, art and architecture nigga, i had an a in art and like a, a high b or low a in architecture this shit i was there for i had a's and b's in psychology i had a c and math i had a d and it was only because it's like this i have no problem with uh our indian brothers and sisters I'm not talking about native americans Talk about chicken curry. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with our Indian, our Indian brothers and sisters. But it's like this. I, It's a disconnect when it comes from a, a teacher to student standpoint. It's a very hard disconnect because I already can't halfway understand what we saying. We have, we already can't halfway understand what they talking about. So I'm at home, right? Just while I'm sick. At this point, nigga, I'm sick. I can't do work. I'm not finna sit there and worry about no damn no damn Pythagorean theorems and all that shit while I'm sick on my damn deathbed. I'm not gonna do that shit. So I said, fuck that. I'm just gonna tell you, I got COVID. I can't work right now. Because nine out of 10, when I was sick, I would sleep so much. Nigga, I'm literally sleeping like 12 hours a day at a time, like 16 hours. Like I, would, I wouldn't even eat. I would literally just drink on water and sleeping. So basically it's like this. I told my teachers, all my teachers, because the architecture and art and all that is in person. And you have to sit there and draw. I, I couldn't do that at home. So they knew it. They do out they, so they get they could be some slack and they said I could just catch up when I get back to school. Even the psychology teacher said that. Even the, the math teacher said that. She said I could catch up when I get back to school. So I'm under the assumption that I'm gonna be straight when I get back. So I end up getting the um getting back to school. Like I told you, before I went, before I got sick, my um my grades was like all B's and A's at first. Like I had two, I had three B's and one A. Yeah, the A was in art, then the high B in uh, architecture, then like two B's in math and psychology. So I told you when I got back, I had a D, C, a B, and A. Right? So I ended up doing some work over the over the break that I had, but it was mostly for psychology because. He had his his assignments online. The the math teacher she had some of them online, but it's like nigga, I'm at home. You're teaching all this to students in person, 
and they can they can understand why you putting it on the board you showing them how to do it and audit in the actual classroom bro you're telling me to go to youtube tutorial bro nigga i'm not gonna understand that shit bro i'm the type of person you gotta show me you gotta explain to me what's gonna be on your test you just give me vague questions to, you give me vague concepts to search up on youtube and try to get it when you gonna give me something that's completely tailored to what you taught them in class it's not gonna fucking work i'm not gonna get it what are you talking about it's not gonna work i'm doing this at home so i'm not getting it i'm not I, can i just can you just help me when i get back to school and then i'll make up whatever work i had to do i, I was willing to you know, i was willing to put in any amount of work i had to because i genuinely wanted to be at school like i, I enjoyed it so i'm like okay she said she kind of brushed it off and gave me a bullshit answer uh okay ass and i'm like all right bitch, fuck it. so we get to the future where i said i'm back at school and all that i get in class this woman said i could have did everything at home i'm like what my apologies you said i could have did i told you i was sick cough cough nigga I, I was i was in the bed all the fucking time i went up i went out and about nigga i was at home in my bed, sleep, or fucking drinking water. Like, I literally, like, I wasn't even eating like that. I'm telling you, like, I was sick as fuck. So, I'm like, bro, she's seen the doctor's excuse, all the shit. She knows I had COVID. At the time, COVID was still a real big thing. It was only 2021. It was, so, COVID was still a real big thing in America as a whole. So, I'm like, bro, you, you should understand, nigga, I had COVID. The worst thing you could have right now, I had it. So, she just, she just ended up brushing off and saying, oh, you could just go to, it was like an SI meeting or something like that. I think that's what it was called. It's basically like tutoring. So I told myself this, because at first, because as soon as she did all that, I'm like, okay, I might be fucked. So I was like this, all right, bitch. I'm going to try my hardest to bring up these grades. If I can't bring up these grades, I'm going to withdraw because I'm not going to fuck up my GPA just so I can stay in school. I'd rather withdraw, keep my GPA at a solid 4.0, and then try to restart probably next semester or something like that. So I, I I started going to the tutoring meetings. I started meeting up with counselors and all that. I was I was starting to come back, but it's just like I was already too far gone. I had brought my um my psychology grade back up to a B, but nigga that math and math got my ass. I had a fucking elf after a while, nigga. So I was I was like, okay, and then you gotta realize the architecture shit. The architecture, they required so much of your time to where it was enough work to cover all four classes by itself just in that one architecture class. And that class was something I had to go to from one o'clock in the evening to five o'clock. So that's a four hour class. And they giving us homework to where it's gonna take up a full week to do it, of weeks, plural. So I'm like, damn, okay. This might not be the best option for me. So I had to reconsider actually staying at school so at this point i'm like all right bet i'm probably gonna leave this motherfucker so long story short i ended up telling my homeboys shit i'm like listen here bucko gonna skedaddle they ain't fucking with the boy so when they get out this bitch i'll, I'll see if i can come back next semester or something like that but right now i ain't fucking with it so i ended up leaving come back home and when i tell you that was probably the first time in, in my life I ever felt like a damn failure. Cause you gotta realize I didn't have a plan B, nigga. I had a plan A, and if plan A didn't work, nigga, I was fucked. So I'm like, okay, damn, what I'm gonna do with my life? I'm like, damn, nigga, what? I don't have nothing to do. I'm in the house all day. At this point, I have a iPad, but it was used for school, and then I would draw on it. So. I was doing recreational stuff for, with art wise. I wasn't doing nothing for payment. I was just drawing. And then I was uh, doing school work. So I was like, damn. I'm in this room all day. So if, if, at first, I was just sitting there just little on the game. Because I didn't have nothing to spend my time on. I was doing shoes and stuff. Because you got to realize I had came back to the city. So folks knew that i was back because i had started making orders and everything so they would start placing orders again so i was making a little money but i knew that wasn't gonna last because at this point i'm like okay in a couple years i'm gonna be a grown grown ass man so i need something that's gonna supply me money money like i'm like i'm gonna be able to actually make money for real so i started just just getting real down because i'm like damn bro that was it 
like all the stuff I had, cause you gotta realize I, I had wanted to be an architect since I was in like the ninth grade, like the eighth or ninth grade. I had been wanting to do that. So when I seen that it, it most likely wasn't gonna work out for me, I was like, damn, that fucking sucks. So long story short, that's what started that era of me being able to be good by myself because I was forced to. All my friends that I was cool with, they were all at college. Every single one of them was in college at that point because it was all our first year going. So it wasn't like I I had people just in my hometown just to, to meet up with, be cool with, do stuff with. I was most of the time all by myself in my room. And that is a terrible place to be when you're down like that because you're literally in your thoughts. And I don't mind is the devil's workshop, literally. So, um, my headspace is completely fucked the whole time I'm up in. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get out of this mojo, bro. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start feeling better. So I was feeling like shit. So I ended up devising a plan. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write down things that I know that I'm already have a certain talent in, and that I could probably do to make money. Because it's like this. I don't care what nobody say. They say money doesn't buy happiness. It doesn't. If you're already mentally, I ain't gonna say mentally unstable, but mentally messed up, it's not gonna buy you happiness. But say if your ha if your if your shortcomings are like your sadness is coming from the lack of money, having money will ease it. It definitely will ease it because you'll feel comfortable. You'll feel comfortable being able to do what you want to do. That's that's the whole reason why when I got back home me being here and not making any money at all it did have me down because i was like fuck i knew if i was an architect i was gonna be making good money and i would be drawing like i would be drawing all day that's little all i'll be doing and i and i genuinely feel like I, I would be good at that but it's basically like this let me get back to the point i was sitting in my room i ended up drawing the um like the things I could do, I ended up saying like a personal trainer because at that point I was working out real heavy, like I was working like seven seven days a week. So if it wasn't for me being at the gym and actually having a certain type of outlet to get all that stress out, I would probably be way more fucked than I was. But I was actually going to the gym and then just coming back, just being in my room. But I was thinking of a uh, dad and then at the time a lot of people were coming out with clothing brands in my city. And I was just seeing them around, like on, on uh, Instagram and stuff. I'm like, okay, I could probably do a clothing brand because all it is is drawing on clothes. And I already paint shoes and paint clothes. So I'm like, okay, that could be one. And then I, it was just like a multitude of things. Just like, oh, uh, me, me trying to see if I could do, like, oh, uh, like you, like I was talking about YouTube, Twitch streaming and all that. But still to the day, I don't have a real computer. This is just a laptop and some monitors. And I just connected the monitors to the laptop with a uh, with like cables and stuff. So still to this day, that's that's my biggest goal to get uh, uh like an actual real good computer so I can stream for y'all niggas. So I can like do like that. And if I can just literally sit there and stream, I can stream me doing this. We be reacting to videos, all type of shit. Besides the point, I did all type of shit. Just wrote down a whole bunch of stuff, and I was writing down what I could do right now versus what I could do once I get like established and other stuff so the main one i saw was a clothing brand so I'm like, okay let me uh let me make me a clothing brand fuck it so i'm like okay i have the the supplies to do that right now i can go ahead and do that and before i even thought of a clothing brand folks in my city would get me to design logos for them because they want to start a clothing brand so i'm like okay I have some type of graphic design background and drawing background. So I, I obviously have the creativity to do it. I just gotta actually try to come up with a name, a, a, a logo, all this stuff. So the first thing I ever came up with was the meaning, behind, like the, not the meaning, but like the message I wanted to convey, which is love, like I was telling y'all. So I came up with probably like four, five different names. And I even came up with a dumbass name that I that realized is already a fucking brand. It was Valentino. I was like, okay, let's just make it Valentino. That'll be hard. Google Valentino is a big ass brand. I actually need to give me some Valentino cologne. Here, this shit smell good as hell. Uh, besides the point, I came up with a more. It wasn't a more word at first. It was just a more, which is literally just love in Spanish. I was I was trying to not overcomplicate it because I'm like, okay, I'm spending all this time trying to find a name instead of making 
design because this, this is at this point I'm at home and it's like December. No, I say I started coming over the the time span of me staying at home and not doing anything was from like November 2021 to like. February, I say February, because I ended up going back to college at like this community college near me, but I did online just so I could finish out the semester as a whole. And I did pretty good, I had straight A's and B's. So I just wanted to get back into that school field to see if I would even fuck with it. I did, so I was like, hell, I'm not even gonna fuck with school no more. I ain't fuck with having to do reports, doing none of this shit. Even, even if I could check GPT all this shit, I still wouldn't do it just because I don't like I don't like school. I'm gonna be honest. I don't like school. I don't like what they teach. I don't like none of this shit. So, I um, I ended up getting into designing the actual clothes and stuff. I say like March, March, April. No, I say May. Yeah, May, May 2022. May 2022 is when I started actually designing clothes for my brand and coming up with designs and stuff. Just getting familiar with the different types of apps that I can use. For, uh, finding blanks and all that, doing design, just doing research on it. So I ended up doing that. Uh, and I know I'm turning this more into a story time than a than a ten things, but it all ties in with the point that I'm trying to make of being in solitude because I wouldn't even be doing this right now if it wasn't for that. If it wasn't for me actually being down on my lowest and actually sitting on my being down on my dick and having to stay by myself. And stay in my mind 24-7. I wouldn't even be here talking to y'all right now doing these clothes. So that's why I'm thankful that God put me in this type of situation to be able to come out of it and make a positive out of it. Because I don't, I don't feel like it's nothing in life is negative. Not even death. It's just people add a negative connotation and stuff because they feel they they I ain't, I ain't gonna say they wanna feel bad, but it's like they wanna have something to blame. Folks love having having something to blame. And if they can have something to blame, it, it takes the pressure off of it. Like I really like, feel like anything in life ain't nothing bad. Everything has for a reason. Even if it's something bad, it probably could be something that's happening to keep you from something worse happening, like death in, in some in, in people's uh, life. So that's why I say ain't nothing bad. It's just lessons, and, and, and God tries to, to put stuff in your path to happen for a reason. Like I honestly feel like if I was still in school, I would not be doing this. At all. I would be probably stressed out like a motherfucker doing a report right now or something. Not eating for real because I wouldn't even eat for real. I wouldn't get sleep at all in, in college because the major is so hard. I was barely getting sleep, barely getting food, all that. So I genuinely feel like this is what God chose as my path. He, he, he allowed me to get sick in that moment because he knew any other way I wouldn't have left college. There was no way you was gonna give me to leave college. I ain't, I ain't care how hard that shit got. I was not gonna leave. I was gonna stick to it. So I had to get sick in order to stay out that long. That's how I look at it. And now I'm on, I'm on a journey for some way greater in my opinion. But I'm gonna just try to cut it short because I ain't trying to keep this video too long. But yeah, I just feel like uh, as long as, as long as you try to find a way to pull back from all the noise at a certain point and just focus on you. Just building your character as a man, as a person. And this go for women or men. You know what I say? It's, it's not just for men, but it's just like, I know the bit, I know best from a man's point of view because I'm a man. So I, I know how it would affect the man's psyche, his mind, because I got, I made it the same stuff as a man, literally. So, this can transfer to women as well. It is just like, you know what I'm saying? It's like it, it would it would be very beneficial as a man to to stay to yourself for a certain extended amount of time, whether it be I say no less than no less than three months. Like real shit. Because a month, that ain't long enough. Like you need something that could that could be life changing to where you can you can literally pull back from everything, whether it be social media, friends, and I'm not saying just become a damn hermit and live under a rock, but just like during this time, if you if you, if you see that you lacking in like how I was saying that hygiene area, 
in the, in in that time, learn how to how to stick to a routine of keeping your hygiene up. If you're not the type of nigga that that get up, make your bed every day, take a shower, brush your teeth, wash your face, and do all that type of shit. Get into the process of, of, of making that a habit because them, them three months can change your life and they can literally become a habit for, for the rest of your life. And you won't have to try to integrate it into your everyday life that you already got going because by the time you, you, you get back to doing all this stuff, it's already going to be most memory in your head. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like this. If you can take the time out to really care about yourself and love yourself enough to to, to push everybody, I ain't gonna say push everybody away, but tell everybody I'm I'm, I'm focusing right now. Like I'm, I'm and, and if they not they not even your real friends, if they can't respect you enough to be like, okay, I understand. Just just hit me up if you need me. Real shit, those are real friends that would do that. If your friends sitting there saying, nigga, you lame, you you um you on you on that bullshit, you on some TikTok ass shit, you you trying to nigga, I'm not here to impress nobody on earth. I'm here for one thing and one thing only and that's to, to make sure that is it I'm putting more good out into this world than I'm than I'm than I'm than I'm putting bad. Literally, that's all I focus on. Help my family and make sure that, that they straight and trying to push out good. Cause that's all if you push out good, that's what's gonna come back to you. I don't want bad shit coming to me. So I'm gonna make sure I'm pushing out as much good as, as I can, and I can't do that if I ain't I ain't feeling good. You know what I'm saying? You can't push out good if you feeling like if you feeling like ass. You can't do that. So it it take a it take a real man to to sit there and, and, and care about himself and care about making sure that, that that he find mentally, physically, spiritually, he take care of it for himself because if you don't do it, ain't nobody gonna do this shit for you. Your mama love you, but she can't hold your hand for the rest of your life. That's how I look at it. That's why from like I was telling y'all from young age, I always try to make sure that I that I learn how to take care of myself. I, I learned how to be autonomous and be able to be self-sufficient because you got to realize it's, it's a sad fact to say it, but your parents are not going to be there your whole life. As soon as I learned that death was a thing, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do this shit on my own one day. I got to get good at it early. That's why I started working out early. I started taking care of my body early. I started learning how to take care of a house early. I know, I'm, one thing my mama never got to worry about is is her kids that she leaves her? I swear to God, we, we we I was grown mentally by the time I was thirteen, dead ass. I was grown. I could do anything I want. I could do whatever. I, the only thing that was holding me back was my actual age from being able to get a driver's license and shit. I knew how to drive at thirteen. My mama and my dad, dad, and, and that's something that I'm glad he let me do. My dad would let me drive with him when I was like 12, 13. He let me drive all the time. He'll just be in the passenger seat, just let me drive, like actually on the road, like just drive. So I, I've been, bro, stuff like that. I've been know how to do all that. I've been knowing how to drive since I was like 11, 12. Been knowing how to how to cook since I was 11, 12, 10, 11, 12. Been knowing how to do all that because I'm an observant person. So if I know I'm gonna be a grown person one day, I gotta watch closely what grown people do. So I ain't gonna say so I can imitate it, but just so I can know, okay. That's something I'm gonna have to do when I get older. So I need to get good at it now while I'm young. So by the time I get that age, nigga, I'm I'm stellar at this shit. You know what I'm saying? So once you take your life seriously, and that's all it is, you taking your life serious. A lot, like I was saying, a lot of folks don't take life serious. They take it as a joke. They take it as okay. I just gotta make sure that everybody else think I'm think I'm doing good. So so I keep up this image. As long as I'm keeping up my image and I'm looking good for everybody. That, that's, that's, that's all that matters to me. I don't give a fuck how I look to people. As long as I know I'm actually straight, like I'm actually good, I ain't caring about no, like I ain't, I ain't, ain't no bills being missed for, for my house, ain't, ain't no food being missed from no plate, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no lights being turned off. All that, as long as I can make sure my family is straight and we good, I could care less what anybody think of me. I swear to God, I don't care. But at the same time, I'm gonna make sure that y'all that y'all y'all get this shit too because i even if y'all don't even if y'all don't think i'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm a cool guy i'm a what's name i'm gonna I'm still care about y'all man. i swear to god because I, I told you that's what people need if folks was trying to stop putting up a front like they don't care about no damn body i swear to god the world would be better because i have no problem telling you i care about you i dead ass care about you whoever watching this shit 
if you watching this, that means you fuck with me in some type of way. I genuinely care about you. I thank you for watching me because you don't have to do that. And if folks realize, bro, a lot of shit people do, they don't have to do it for you. Folks do stuff sometimes out of literally the kindness of their heart. But folks don't believe that because it's not enough of that. But everybody doing stuff for money now, it's hard to tell if somebody genuinely trying to be a good person or if they just doing it for clout, money, all that. That's why I said, I'm going to make sure. Everybody's going to know that I'm, I'm, I don't need no fucking money, bro. All I need you to know is I care about you. That's, that's what I'm here for. As, as long as you know I care about you and, and I want to see you do good for real, bro, that's, be, that's bigger than money. That's going to always be better than money. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how rich a nigga is. You can have all the money in the world, but if you ain't a good person, bro, that shit not gonna that shit don't that shit don't carry over to the next life, bro. This fake currency don't carry over, bro. That shit don't mean nothing. Only thing it means something to is the nigga that, that you paying it to. The corporations are and that's the only shit that, that means something to. To the old like nigga, I ain't I ain't never cared about money. I cared about the feeling that somebody gets from being around me. That's why if you if you ever around me in person, nigga, I'm gonna talk. Even if I meet you for the first time, I'm gonna talk to you like I've been on you for years, bro. Real shit. If I fuck with you, you gonna know I fuck with you. You gonna know I'm cool with you. And it, and even even females, certain females will probably even think I'm trying to talk to. Them. I don't want to talk to you. I got a wife, bro. I got a, I got a whole wife, bro. I don't need to talk to you. But I'm such a cordial person. It might come off as that, but I'm genuinely being nice. It's just girls are not used to a genuinely nice nigga. They're not. They think they take it as if you being nice to them. I got a boyfriend. You wanna? I don't want your ass. The fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> the fuck? I'm just being nice. I'm being cordial. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said it's so fucked up because everybody thinks like that. Most people think like that, and man, we gonna get right. Just give me about a give me about a solid year. Give me a solid year of consistency with folks finding out about what I got going on in this corner of the world. I'm going to put this shit out here, well, I promise. But I thank y'all for sitting with me through all my rambling and things of that nature. Thank y'all for uh, rocking with me. I'm going to get way, way more consistent. It's just these shirts, they they taking some out of them. I'm going to show y'all this other one I just started doing. It's a, uh, cause I got I to tell y'all, bro, I'm literally, this two of them right here. I, this is gonna be my third one that I did today. Cause I'm just putting the um the painted part on there and I'm gonna do the stenciling all in one day. But this is one that I just did. Bro, this shit hard as fuck. It's gonna be like a special edition one. I'm gonna sell these. Uh cause like these is only gonna be a hundred of the regular ones. But these, I'm gonna do these like unlimited. Like however many y'all want, but it's gonna be a high price though. So if you wanna pay for it, you can pay for it. But it got this on the back, like the uh, hearts and stuff on the back. And again, this is all hand. This is all hand painted. All this shit. So I'm putting my time, and my hours into this shit. So, um, but yeah, appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Y'all like the video, you know? It's free to drop a like, subscribe. Also free. You know what I'm saying? Turn on the post notifications so you know when I post again. And yeah, we out.